Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and in this episode I continue to test the lunar capabilities of Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket and this time we begin we have three planned launches and we begin by testing its ability to launch potentially uh, Earth departure stage but not a fully fueled one, almost fully fueled um, but I decided not to fully fuel it because I also added a payload the payload is, uh, well it says Kerbal Habitation Module 4-2, but what it really is, is the Destiny module off of the ISS. And it weighs in at uh, a bit over 14 tons right now. Uh, the Destiny module is 14.5 tons, and um, I, I'm not entirely sure exactly the number that we've got here with that module. But uh, yeah, uh, let's assume 14 tons on top of the Earth departure stage. And so in order to compensate for that, I had to underfuel the Earth departure stage. Of course, we will need the fuel from the Earth departure stage in order to finish orbit. Uh, the New Glenn rocket cannot launch it all the way to orbit on its own. But then again, neither does SLS. So let's see how it goes. I've locked the fuel tanks because otherwise the launch clamps will replenish the stage, but we'll have to unlock those. And let's run New Glen 3, since it's three stages. I've turned down the glow a bit. Still working on that. Still working on the post-processing mod. Now, our version of the Earth departure stage is a little bit different from the one that NASA is using on the Space Launch System as its upper stage. That one has four RL-10s. Ours does not. Ours has one BE-3 vacuum. Of course. Why not, right? Makes a whole lot more sense. And um, the BE-4 vacuum, B-3 vacuum, sorry, um, has more thrust than four RL-10s and would almost certainly be cheaper and would involve less plumbing on the stage, it would be better all, all around. So definitely that would be a replacement that I think would be good and necessary. Okay, we have separation of the first stage, still reserving the 7.5% of the first stage for a possible uh, landing on the barge. So we are still reserving fuel and separation of the fairings to reveal the little module that we have up there. So the reason why I decided to put a Destiny module up here is for the Deep Space Gateway, I think it's called, uh, or Deep Space Habitat, uh, Lunar Orbital Platform Gateway. I don't know what name they want to call it. Anyway, uh, the idea is that there would be a cryogenic stage plus um, a little habitat module and then an MPLM, which is a logistics module, meaning food mainly and then the Orion spacecraft and that would be a thing that would stick around the moon for some reason um, and they would launch that on on SLS but I figured that in two launches we could probably do the same thing with uh, two or three I mean it depends on how much you store in the MPLM um, we could probably do the same thing with the Blue Origin New Glenn and so this would be launch one and then we would dock the MPLM and the Orion to it. You would, I mean, uh, there are numerous ways of eventually getting it over to the moon and everything, including re just refueling the Earth departure stage. So all I have going for me is the Delta V reading and the VAB right now. I do not know if this is going to end up with enough fuel to transfer over to the moon with the, the Destiny module, I'll just call it, or uh, ISS HAB module, we can say. It does have one docking port up front, but otherwise no docking ports. I don't know to what extent the Earth departure stage is supposed to be minimal boil-off or zero boil-off. Would be handy if it was. Well, we are coming close to the end of the second stage, and it's having a whole lot of trouble. At least the vertical speed has turned around and now tending towards zero, because we're going down pretty fast. We might have to pitch up more than it's doing right now. Okay, we have ignition of the third stage. 
And if we do some math, we need about 2,400 minimum to make orbit. It says we have 6,000 meters per second in this stage. I'm not 100% sure I trust it on that. I think it might be misreading the payload again. But if if it was telling the truth, that would be enough to get us to warp, uh, get us to the moon. Not enough necessarily to make orbit around the moon. We'll see. We'll just have to. Well, but uh, we do seem to be falling again. Um, we'll see if it can avoid the atmosphere. It's gonna be a tight one. Okay, vertical speed is starting to pick up again, but we've got 20 kilometers left before we are re-entering. Well, I think we're going to be grazing the atmosphere a bit. Obviously, the trajectory needs work, but what else do you expect when you're trying something new with a launcher? So, here we go. That's the atmosphere. Of course, it would be better if we didn't use the Earth departure stage because then we wouldn't have to have a bit of the tank empty and that would be a little bit more efficient. But this is to demonstrate a particular thing uh, with regard to NASA's plans, of course. Okay, we are going up again, but are we gonna go up enough so that we can uh, get to 140 kilometers before we have to make orbit? And how's the launch script going to handle all this dipping back down into the atmosphere? That I don't know. By necessity, it expects that we are going to actually be out of the atmosphere when it comes time to circularize and everything. So, this is complicated. I'll prepare to cancel the script if necessary, if it starts going out of whack. Which it probably may do. Uh, I'll let it get to a periaps. Uh, no, it can't get to. Okay, no, no, no. That'll have to be enough. Because uh, we're so close to just outside the atmosphere, it would take a very long time and result in a very high apoapsis if we continue burning. And the apoapsis is on the wrong side, of course. Of course it would be. Okay, but we seem to have 3,149. Which isn't going to be enough to capture around the moon. But just to demonstrate, I think it's got to be enough to transfer to the moon. Not so... Uh, that was low enough periapsis. And, well, actually, uh, because we're higher up at this end, thanks to the inaccuracy, not quite. But let me verify that it's not telling me a lie about the delta V, and I'll just quickly handle the burn. Well, in space, the new numbers certainly make it look uh, rather normal, actually. The post-processing mod, I mean not doing nearly as much as it used to. Ignition. Okay, yeah, that leaves us a little bit short. Let's see what it looks like. Well, we would have a uh, encounter with the moon, but very, very high. We're actually getting closer thanks to the RCS. The hydrazine is pushing us forward, but again, we wouldn't make orbit. So that's the situation. We barely avoided burning up in the atmosphere, and uh, but still, pretty darn close. Just a little bit of an uprating on the first stage engines would would make it possible, I think. Yep. And of course, if we had less of a payload, instead of 14 tons here, if we had oh 10 tons it would have worked out and again you only really need about 300 meters per second to get into a high orbit around the moon you need 800 to get into a low orbit but a high orbit could potentially be good enough so that something else could dock to it and either tug it or refuel it in order to bring it into a lower orbit but for now uh, that is test number one 
and this is with reference to the deep space habitat, the deep space gateway, and uh, what could be done to launch that. Uh, next, we'll have something else. Okay, so our next launch is a lander for the moon, a lander that uh, does not stage between landing and ascending again into lunar orbit, so it can be reused. So it's just a single stage lander, unlike the uh, lander for the Apollo missions. And it can carry three, in this case, Kerbals. It's the Alcor pod, which actually has a very nice interior. And my intention is that this will actually reach the moon and make orbit around it. Now, in order to make orbit around it, uh, we needed to make some modifications to the third stage, including using Hydrolox RCS thrusters. Um, I've got some curved solar arrays on the sides of the tanks, similar to what you would see on a Dragon 2 capsule. Um, and also I've got radiators to cool it down. So hopefully that'll prevent the boil off, but I'm not sure. And of course we do have to line up with the moon to make this happen. And we're off. Okay, first stage about to go out. And... There we go. You know, because it thralls down, we're actually reserving more than 7.5%, I think. Okay, second stage lit, and the fairing separated. Not too sure it's wise to do that all at once, but that's what it did. And there's our little lander. In total, it has... Let's check its delta V out. Uh, 4,784 meters per second. It's got solar panels, radiator, etc. But we need something to meet up with it, right? That's important. We need something that can rendezvous with it and transfer the Kerbals to it. Of course, this isn't meant to launch the Kerbals on board. Or other people's humans, if you really need to use humans. But, um... Orion didn't quite work out. I mean, it'd be a tough push and probably require the first stage to be uh, expendable. So, we have to look to another option. And I will introduce that after this launch. Okay, second stage is done, and now stage three. This time it's immediately picking up the vertical speed, so we're not at any risk of going back into the atmosphere. And the payload is relatively light. If we take a look, um, it's 11.3 tons, and that's accomplished by the fact that we're using the common extensible cryogenic engine, the RL-10 variant. And it burns hydrogen and oxygen at a very high ISP, so that's all good. Now, whether the hydrogen oxygen is going to stay okay is partly dependent on our radiators. And I don't think those radiators actually kill the boil off on these tanks at the bottom, so that's part, part of the problem, if you will. Uh, activate radiator there. So we might have to slap some more radiators on. I even snuck some hydrogen and oxygen, not much, into here. So that's also a thing. Since, uh, I think, well, we'll have to check electric charge later when we're not tail first to the sun. Okay, we are about to make orbit, and so far so good. If you figure about 3,200 meters per second to get to the moon, uh, that leaves us about 1,100 meters per second to make orbit around the moon, which is more than enough. But let's see about boil off. Actually, 1,200 it looks like. So let's just quickly have Mechjeb plot 
in the transfer. And as far as our power is concerned, it's all drained. How? I think there's something wrong here. Hold on. Uh, okay, well, I can't extend solar panels. I'm getting the feeling that these solar panels are not doing what they're supposed to do. I think they lied to me. Okay. It says there's sun exposure. Well, I'm, I'm gonna cheat because I think there's something wrong with the configuration on those panels. So infinite electricity first and we're just going to extend these. I don't know if they're enough if there's if these solar panels are actually producing a drain that would be a problem let's see uh, it, it seems like those solar panels are actually producing a drain well let me try and turn this towards the node and maybe it'll be alright we'll see or maybe it's just the fact that we have so many radiators I don't know But these solar panels definitely are not doing what they should be doing. Let me see if I turn it off now. Wow, 12? A draw of 12 suddenly? Yeah, there's something weird going on. We'll try and take it off once uh, we dump this stage, but that'll be around the moon already. Okay, throttling down and shut down. Wow, that that was briefly very special. It showed like three approaches to the moon right there, but I think it was lying to us, maybe. Well, this is an interesting approach. thing is we're going to have to get the crew to it somehow and that means probably we need to put it retrograde around the moon for potential free return possibilities and uh, mid-course adjustments could be a good idea though it's not letting me make a node there. So we've still got um, infinite electricity on because I don't know what was going on down here. Maybe it is just the radiators. Let me see. Shut down radiator. No, the radiators didn't. Well, it is infinite electricity, so I don't know. Uh, all right, let's turn off infinite electricity and now shut down the radiator no it's not uh, they're using 0.05 per second well within our requirements so what uh, I think these panels are causing a drain that they're not supposed to or something else is causing a drain it's not supposed to I think the Alcor pod is fine so I doubt it's that okay anyway uh, let's head out and Will it make ah there we go we got a maneuver node to maybe flatten this a little bit better well total delta v is diminishing rapidly and even on this tank which has a radiator on it wait a second where did my radiators go I definitely had radiators on on this tank but they're gone. Um, pretty sure I recorded myself turning them on too. So something weird has happened. These radiators are still present. So that's good. But we're experiencing a lot of boil off and a lot of delta V loss. Because the ones on here seem to have disappeared. Hmm. Very strange. Anyway, continuing to the maneuver node.
It's always something. Look at that boil off go. Well, we definitely don't have enough to land on the moon right now. Okay, that is a good enough burn. Let's get to the moon. Trouble is, since boil off has occurred, well, it's mostly liquid hydrogen, so, um, yeah, I mean, it, so it has changed the mass of the payload, so it's not a perfect test, but it's certainly been instructive. We have learned a few things. First of all, we've got an electric charge problem. And second of all, we've got quite a serious boil-off problem and a potential disappearing radiator problem. Now, on this stage, it's the radiators have been doing fine, actually. You can see the hydrogen and oxygen have been balanced, so it, it's kept the boil-off away from us. And there's been close to zero boil-off or zero boil-off, so... Okay. I'm gonna just say that's good enough for now. And uh, we're going to undo infinite electricity. Interesting thing, right now the electric charge reads balanced. Why? I'm not sure. I think those, what, those, the radiators on the, the lander had some sort of issue? Maybe? Uh, wait. I sort of... no. I mean, if the radiators on the ladder had an issue and then they disappeared... First of all, not much of a surprise if they were glitched out to begin with. Anyway, um, right now we're not exactly recharging. Not that we need to, but let's separate off this bunch. <laughs> And now we're on the lander, and no electric charge drain. No net electric charge drain. Well, so we got it here, but we didn't get it here with the fuel it's supposed to have. But let's move on to the somewhat more difficult part, if you can imagine that. And that's launching the crew over here. Okay, well, seeing as how the Orion capsule is a bit too heavy for the new Glenn to launch to the moon, I figured, well, what about the Apollo module, which I mentioned in the previous video, and, and its service module, which altogether has a lot more Delta V than the Orion service module. And uh, it's still uh, quite a push if we fully fueled the service module, so I didn't. Uh, we are only half fueling the service module on the Apollo and that's okay because if you remember the service module on Apollo is meant to get both the command module and the LEM into orbit around the moon and in this case we're sending the lander separately and we only need to get this into orbit around the moon and so we don't need quite as much fuel in fact, if we unlock this tank, we can take a look at... Oh! Oh no! Oh no! 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 I guess we'll launch with that much. Um, uh, it started fueling immediately. Okay, well, uh, I mean, I, I, I haven't tried it, so I don't know exactly how well it's going to work out either way. Uh, but uh, basically, uh, half-fueled, it had like 2,000 meters per second, so which is pretty good. And that's certainly enough to make orbit around the moon and return. But now I've given it a little bit more fuel so probably we'll need to use some of that in order to complete the burn to the moon. We'll see. Um, you can see here that the three stages of the rocket have combined 13,389 meters per second but we are still trying to reserve some fuel in the first stage so we can't use all of that to get to the moon so that's the trick. Anyway uh, with that all set uh, yep, that. Yeah. I want the Apollo map module, and we're just gonna run New Glenn uh, as it was configured for the Orion.
Okay, here we go again. This will be the last launch of this particular video. We'll continue testing other things later. It is a shame that we don't have another light lunar capable spacecraft available. I don't know if uh, something like CST-100 could be adapted with a uh, larger service module or something like that. And of course an appropriate heat shield. Dragon capsule, uh, again it would need a different service module. It, uh, it does not have the capability right now. Again, one interesting thing about uh, New Glenn is payloads do look good on top of it. Uh, the Apollo command module looks quite natural on top of the New Glenn rocket. Even the EUS seemed to, ah, uh, sorry, EDS, the Earth departure stage, uh, seemed to look pretty decent on top of it, even though it's wider. Okay, first stage reserving its fuel and separating ignition of the second stage. is good. Okay. And there goes the launch escape system. Okay, well, we're about to be done with the second stage and, uh, well, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, certainly it seems like we'll be using the service module to complete the transfer to the moon. That's not a surprise. And we are not going to be going back into the atmosphere, so that's a positive. But it looks like we'll need about 500 meters per second from the service module, so that's quite a lot. We'll see. Okay, that's orbit. And we've got 2,500 meters per second left, so that's not so good. But. Uh, let's see, let's unlock these now. We don't have the launch clamps, oops. Oh, well it's not uh, showing... Oh, that's because that's decoupling at the wrong time. Okay, 4,800 meters per second total. That means that the service module right now has 2,300. That's pretty good. Anyway, uh, we don't have any radiators on this, so we have to just plot and go. Can't hang on to it this time. Okay, well, here we go. Ignition. I probably should have ignited a little bit earlier, to be honest. Because we also have the service module bit to do. Okay, separation. 600 meters per second. And ignition. the trusty service module propulsion system. Okay, well that's a good enough moon periapsis and I'm not gonna belabor the point. 1600 meters per second is enough to get into a low orbit around the moon and come back. Um, but it's not a whole lot of margin if we need to dock with a lunar lander. And this will have to do most of the rendezvous and docking in that case. So that's not great. I would like a little bit more margin and so I'll take a look at what I can do, and uh, possibly it's just not overburdening the hydrolock stages, which are more uh, efficient after all. Uh, I shouldn't have let the launch clamps add more fuel to this stage. That was inefficient, and probably if I hadn't done that, we would have ended up with a little bit more margin here. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because uh, well, I've done quite enough in this episode for now, and uh, at least I've previously tested the parachutes and heat shield on the Apollo capsule in other occasions so I don't have to go through that until we actually put together a finalized sort of mission after testing these capabilities but anyway we know what the launcher can do with an Apollo command module and its service module so I'm satisfied with that for now and with that I'll say thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.